Learning through the medium of English is a common experience for many pupils all over the world. We'll look at three schools where, for most pupils, English is not the first language. A primary school in London, another primary in South Africa, and a sixth form college in Singapore. In each of the schools, an English lesson is taking place, but the teachers are aiming to develop basic and advanced skills beyond just those associated with the curriculum subject. Uphall Primary is in Barking, East London. Between them, the children here speak 47 different languages. 98% of them speak English as an additional language. First things first, I want you to look at the picture in the top right corner. Can someone put their hand up and tell me what that animal is? Hippo. It's a hippo or a hippopotamus to give it its full name, OK? And what I want you to do... I find after their speaking skills start to develop, that basic writing skills start to improve. Central aims and purpose for me, uh, teaching English, is to give them uh, confidence and, and a love of writing and seeing it as a creative process. The goal of this lesson is to build on the students' speaking skills and develop their vocabulary. What are we talking about when we're talking about the character of an animal? Mohammed? Personality. It's personality, it's nature, OK? So I want you to think of all the words that we used earlier in the week. Aggressive, what was the opposite of aggressive? Do you remember? We said peaceful, but there was a slightly more technical vocabulary type of word that we could use. Fawad? Passive, well done, well remembered. And I want you to write down some words, OK, on your character cards in front of you to describe the character of our hippo. Uh, you're gonna, how are you going to describe it? It's fierce or something like that. Um, it's quite petrified. Petrified. Contents, so as well, tense. Anyway. And then what's yours? A uh, character uh, tense and mine is uh, um, proud. Proud. Yours is really proud of you. Friendly. Friendly. Proud and friendly. Proud and friendly. We have a key focus on speaking, the speaking of English, but our curriculum also supports uh, the reading of English, uh, the love of books and characters in order to promote language development. A key element is talking, speaking, and we encourage that throughout our lessons, through debates, through discussion. What else have we got? Uh, Maliha? Like, it's big. It's huge, isn't it? It's very big. Even the babies look quite big. Um, Mo? Uh, placid. 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 You think it looks placid, but do you think you could use that for its characteristic as well? Can you tell me what you think placid means? Smooth. Um, Alpha found it in the thesaurus and he said that it meant smooth. Smooth. Placid is really something to describe the characteristic, OK? And I think it's a brilliant, brilliant bit of vocabulary that you've, you've stumbled on there, OK? Placid means easygoing, OK? One of the school's strategies is a strong emphasis on kinesthetic and visual material to help stimulate and motivate the students. You need to put your hands up, OK? What I tried to do was incorporate a lot of visual stimulus, a lot of moving, a lot of talking and, and presenting ideas um, using scaffolding, using frameworks, but getting them to speak. One more. Who would like to call out their animal? Abu? This is an eagle. It has sharp beak and claws with a long, tapered head. I think it. I think that it eats. Okay. I would say tapered head is actually tapered head. Do you know what tapered means? It like comes forward and then comes together. Yeah, it comes forward and narrows out. So has anyone got? In the next task, the children are asked to write down the diets of different animals. We need to answer these questions first before deciding on our diet. And this is just a little bit of a prompt for you. So how large is my creature? Will it need to eat more substantial amounts of food? We're going to use these writing frames to actually plan out our diet part of our non-chronological reports. Some students are given enriched vocabulary to use, and those in need of support 
have keywords written out for them and help from teaching assistants. You can think what your animal eats, leaves, insects, spiders, what do you think eats your animal? Uh, my one is fish and eagles and little mammals. So it's fish and eats the eagles, so it's and birds. Jellyfish and jellyfish and uh, worms and them. And what are, so write that down then, yeah? So we're going to fill in the gaps here in the writing frame. So you say that it's jellyfish and fish and eagles. Eagles, yeah, nest there. Okay. I see it mammals. Yeah. Now, of course, it eats its prey by catching. Now we need to think the way it catches the prey. I need you to be as quiet as can be. I'm going to close the door, OK? And I need you to listen. Chapel Street is an English medium primary school in Cape Town. English is one of many languages spoken in South Africa, and the children in this class have not yet become fluent. I need you to listen to the sounds. I need you to imagine that you are there. This English lesson starts with some audio stimulus. Imagine all the things that you are seeing. Imagine that you are there. When I was at school, English was very structured, where you had a set period for reading, and you had a set period for grammar, and you had a set period for each and every aspect of English. Where nowadays, they want us to teach all the aspects in one lesson. Who's going to tell me? What was that sound? How did you feel? What do you think that noise was in the background? What were all the different noises that you heard? Yes, Luanda. Animals' noise. He says it's definitely an animal's noise. Anybody else? What did you hear? A bird. He heard a bird. Anybody hear anything else? Um, a dolphin in the sea. He heard a dolphin in the sea. But teaching English here is challenging, as only 10% of pupils speak English at home. Christopher, what did you hear? A few speak Zulu or Hosa but the most common home language is Afrikaans. I find that the kids here speak basically English and Afrikaans. They will mix up the language quite often. I have a strict rule in my class. When you come into my class, you speak English only when we're busy with English. So, because sometimes they will say, um, you know Moss what I mean, and Moss is an Afrikaans word. Or, um, I went to the swimming pool and I uh, I took a, a dake, a lick a dake. Dake is an Afrikaans word. So I tried to get them to speak basically English only. Difficult because they, that is what they speak at home, a mixture of English and Afrikaans. What do we call a baby dolphin? Anybody, what would we call a baby dolphin? A baby dog, what do we call a baby dog? A puppy, so what would we call a baby dolphin? Starts with a C. A calf, yes, a calf. We call a baby dolphin a calf. The children's lack of fluency in English means they're not yet confident enough to participate fully in classroom discussions. When Nina first arrived at the school, the pupils found it difficult to keep up in lessons. I found that firstly that I basically spoke too fast and they couldn't really understand what I was saying. And um, they were on a much lower level of English that than what they are expected to be in grade six. So I had to sort of use a simpler form of English language. First thing that comes to your mind when you think about a dolphin, Kelly? Ocean. Ocean, right. Let's write the word ocean on the board. The school operates a buddy system to help the children who are less proficient in English. Yonela. I also use some of the um, stronger learners where they can basically translate to each other if they don't understand and I get them to do body work with each other, get them to work with each other. They can't, some of them can't even use a dictionary to look up a word so I get the partner to look up and the one to write down and things like that. Tell me something about emotional, psychological meaning about the brain and feelings that dolphins are involved in. Yes, Luanda? Don't like like fighting to others. They don't, so what would you, give me one word for not like fighting with others. Give me one word that you can use for that. Something starting with a P perhaps? 
Sean? Playful. Playful, but somebody that doesn't like fighting with a P, anybody? Peaceful. peaceful. So they are playful, they are peaceful. Are, are they normally associated with happy or sadness? Yes? Happy. Happiness, right? It's normally associated with happiness. The school lacks resources. There are no electronic whiteboards and no internet connection in the classrooms. Do you know anything about the name Dolphin, where the name Dolphin came from? Who would like to take a guess? You can't see that side. Um, you can't see now. Can you see? Okay, you're fine. Resources and stuff. I, I cannot send a child home to the library to go and do research because they don't belong to a library. Um, so I have to bring in books and have it here in the class for them to do research if I'm going to do a specific topic. Although the parents have chosen to send their children to an English medium school, many do not speak English themselves. The most challenging part is when they have tasks to do at home and parents cannot help them because they don't understand the language themselves. Yonela, first thing that comes to your mind when you think about a dolphin? Water. Water. Next person, anybody, yes, Luanda. Saving people's life. Saving people's lives, wow. Okay, saving lives. In Singapore, English is the medium of instruction from the start of schooling. By the time they reach secondary school, the students are highly proficient in English. At Anglo-Chinese Junior College, most students are studying for A-levels, and English literature is a popular choice. There are three ways that we can look at the text, OK? One is looking at the themes. Right? What kind of themes, what kind of issues are there in the text, OK? You could be asked on a particular character, OK? Or they can ask you um, to look at a particular technique that's there. In this lesson, they're revising one of their set texts, Wide Sargasso Sea, by the West Indian writer Jean Rees. So the common questions that you might get eventually at the A-levels is discuss the presentation of, for example, madness, right, in the novel White Sagas so see. Not just the idea of madness. Don't just tell me, oh, madness is presented in the text. Madness is presented in the text, right? But it has to be more than that. How is madness presented in the text? And therefore, through what literary means is it presented? This is a selective, well-resourced school with many of the students coming from well-off families. Their fluency in English enables them to develop a sophisticated understanding of the texts, and most are aiming for an A grade. We use a lot of what we call metacognitive strategies, so teaching them how to think, how to read a text, because many of them just kind of um, look at a, a new um, piece of writing and go, OK, it's just a whole mass of words to me. So taking them through the steps of, well, when you first look at a new piece of writing, what are the things you can do to work out what it means? And then what's the next level of thinking about this? And then having modeled what that would be like, um, we then get the students to try that out on their own and gradually get uh, more accustomed to doing that. Can I have your attention? This is the way to revise. Okay? This is the way to revise. It's not, hi, I've read the book two or three times, and therefore, I am ready. Well, that's a prerequisite, right? But if you really want to break it down and to be prepared and, and really understand the issues in the text, then this is a good way to do it. Right? It helps you not to just describe or summarize what's happening in the novel. Okay? This particular class works very well in small groups. They love being in small groups because they, they talk and then they get to discuss and work it out. And sometimes, well, actually that's quite useful. So it doesn't necessarily always have to be the teacher who is the one giving them the information. I think it's just as important for them to work it out themselves so that they get that process going and they learn how to be critical thinkers and readers and to discuss the work. So, but Des, you know what, Des is a motif. Yeah. Is it a theme or a motif? These students are studying for the Cambridge exam board, so many of the texts are by British writers. Although there is inevitably a cultural gap, the students manage to overcome it. Any challenges? Um, one of the challenges is like um, being able to discern between what's like the actual physical setting and um, 
the perceptions of the settings by the characters. So like sometimes they project their own feelings onto the settings and it makes it different from what it actually may be. Like Rochester's too much blue, too much purple, too much green. So it kind of changes things for you. They enter the world of the text and explore it together. And I think that's a meaningful way of looking at life and exploring and examining the human condition and they can talk about that. I think that it helps them to grow emotionally and to be more mature in, in the sense of looking at situations and characters and not necessarily judging them, but to understand, you know, and I think empathy is, is something that they do learn.